All right, very good morning. Tuesday the 14th of December. And before we begin the briefing, I need your help to sort out a debate in the Chungi household last night, which was, what is the best Christmas movie? So in Twitter, you, I've done a poll last night, but you can only do four options, I'm afraid. So although there were good shouts for things like Scrooge and Elf and Love Actually and others, I've gone with Die Hard, Home Alone, The Miracle on 34th Street, or It's a Wonderful Life. And I need you to to sort this out once and for all. What's the best Christmas movie out of those four? Home Alone, out as the clear runner, followed by Die Hard at the moment. So drop me a comment on the video. Let me know what your favorite is uh, so we can resolve this matter and move on. But talking about markets this morning and what have we got going on? A little bit of dollar strength as we go into the European open. However, things are pretty quiet. There's nothing really too major for me to mention of groundbreaking news that's developed in the overnight session. We had a slightly lower close on Wall Street. We finished down about nine tenths in the S&P and the Dow. The Nasdaq, a little bit of an underperformer, down 1.4%. The Asia Pac indices kind of followed suit. They fell for a third straight session. Uh, Chinese property and technology stocks in a little bit of focus, and they generally weighed in overnight Asia Pac sentiment. Um, the first being sparked by a company called Shimao Group Holdings. And on the tech side, Weibo shares were down about 9% after receiving a regulatory fine uh, as well. But as we go into the European Open, the, that, that kind of Asia pack sentiment has just been brushed aside a little bit. Stock index futures just popping up um, a touch as we go into this morning. And with the dollar strength, worth keeping an eye on the likes of the euro dollar on some of the lower bound levels that we were trading in yesterday's session. This, the calendar for today is relatively quiet. Um, overall, the quiet news cycle as well is largely a byproduct of the fact that you've got the big central bank meetings happening, the Fed, of course, tomorrow, and then you've got the Bank of England ECB on Thursday. And for one, wouldn't be too much of a surprise to see a, a kind of a renewed divergence play short term in the currency space, more favorable to the dynamics of a firmer dollar against a generally weaker euro. Although the ECB on Thursday will talk about ending their PEP in March and then the transitional effect of any alterations they might do to the APP, the idea is that the Fed are ready to go in terms of speeding up tapering irrespective of the still yet to really emerge stateside Omicron virus. And that could well exert some further direction or downside bias. And as you can see here in the euro, we generally have been trending lower really since the end of last week um, for the moment. We'd very much expect that to continue really and if we break through yesterday's low you've got the s1 on the downside at 112.84 in the futures and then the low from um, kind of latter part of last week that was seen down towards the s2 level of 112.56 so likewise in cable we did trend lower in cable overnight there was obviously some news further updates going on the UK Omicron front. So just get you up to speed of what's happening there. Obviously, yesterday, we had the UK Health Secretary Siji Javid told Parliament that new coronavirus strain now accounts for around 20% of all confirmed COVID-19 cases in England, while the estimated number of daily infections is said to be around 200,000, according to an estimate from the UK Health Security Agency. And that would be by far and above the highest that we've ever seen. Um, the other side that you're likely to hear today is that according to the Spectator magazine, so a very uh, on the pulse political magazine, said that 78 Tory MPs have said they'll vote against the government on the use of so-called vaccine passports. Uh, this was reported last night. That's just shy of the working majority that Boris has of around 80 in the House of Commons. Um, still, though, the measures are almost certain to pass, and the reason for that is the opposition Labour Party has said they'll still vote for them. Uh, the question is whether more will be needed, especially if the booster programme falls short of target, because if they're already bulking at the use of um, the vaccine passport at the moment, if we start to see more intensified restrictions, it's going to become increasingly problematic for Boris to, to manage, and of course comes in the context of all the other political uh, kind of issues he's facing at the moment, sleaze scandals, inappropriate Christmas celebrations, so on and so forth. So in the currency market, again, um, cables found a bit of a flaw and bounce around the low that we had 
on Friday, which was also around the S1 in the futures market. However, we'll be keeping an eye on that at the moment, particularly in the context if we continue to see a firmer dollar and some of the more negative developments and Omicron start to emerge in terms of how quickly um, this is picking up. And the idea being here is that the faster that it does, then the more likely it is we start to adopt Plan C type measures and and a more progressive nature of restrictions, and that's going to have more economic impact and thus then drive a divergence between the dollar dynamic of strength against the potentially re-evaluation of pushing out rate hikes to the Bank of England and the economic uh, impacts and effects of what type of restrictions would result in for the UK. Um, otherwise, quick look elsewhere, just coming back to the news, uh, we have the White House, the latest here, on the Build Back Better bill is that the White House is rushing to try and save it. The Democratic senator from West Virginia and Biden's kind of main person he needs to get on board is Joe Manchin. And he told reporters on Monday that he had a good conversation with the president and remained engaged in negotiations. And a lot of this has come as for months he's raised concerns about the size and scope of the legislation and has recently tied his objections to rising inflation. And that's very much what the Republicans' view is at the moment. Why would you want to do such magnitude stimulus when inflation is already tracking at a near 40-year high, of course, at around 6.8% year on year, as we saw last week? The other thing then is just ongoing. Um, Elon Musk accelerated his disposal of Tesla shares as per that Twitter poll a few weeks ago. So he's offloaded another just over 900,000 shares for around 900 million US dollars to cover taxes on the exercise of 2.1 million options. Um, so he's got a few more million to go before he's exercised the full amount and the 10% has been fulfilled. One thing I did see was that Musk exercised op options to buy 2.134 million shares of Tesla. The strike price was 6.24 a share. Wouldn't you love to have a couple of those? given in mind that Tesla's shares obviously are trading around a thousand bucks at the moment. So he was given that obviously back in 2012 when that was a fair price for the shares back then in 2012. So yeah, credit credit to him in that, in that sense. Um, otherwise, as far as the calendar is concerned, um, it is pretty quiet overall. And um, we've had some UK data come out this morning. So let me just get you up to speed and get the latest numbers for those. Just bear with me one, one second. So the UK... Uh, ILO unemployment rate, 4.2% was in line with expectations. Um, the average earnings exponent is 4.3%. It's a touch firmer than expected, 4%, but reaction in, um, in sterling dollar has been insignificant. So moving further on towards the rest of the, the session, what do we have? Very quiet, really. You've got the Eurozone industrial production figures coming out at 10. You've got US PPI numbers coming out at 130. Uh, and that is pretty much it. There's no major central bank speakers, of course, because they're all in the kind of blackout period. Well, that is for the Fed, at least, going into tomorrow night's decision. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So don't want to spend any more longer than necessary to talk. Um, again, drop me a comment. Let's put this argument to bed. Best Christmas film, in your opinion? Let me know. All right, with that, take care, guys. Have a good day, and I'll catch you tomorrow.